Thank you, Dave. So like Dave said, my name is Nathan. Uh, I'm a senior engineer from edX. Uh, and I'm talking about porting a Django view to an MFE, which is a micro front end application. And the clicker works. Excellent. So you've probably heard about uh, MFEs at some point this weekend. But if you haven't, what is an MFE and why would we want to use one? So we used to build front end experiences using Django views. So this is code that lives inside of edX platform, the LMS and the CMS, um, that actually writes out all the HTML that a user sees on the page from inside of the platform. But with MFEs, we develop these experiences outside as standalone React and Redux applications. Um, this helps with our goal of deconstructing the monolith, which is getting stuff out of edX platform where there's already lots of people and code and complexity all interacting. Um, they also reduce server load by uh, letting the client browser instead of the server render the page and gives us access to Paragon, which is our component library. Gives us lots of good stuff like uh, component reuse, branding, and accessibility all out of the box. So this talk was inspired by a task my team had. We were asked to make one of these MFEs to replace the student dashboard. So this is when you log in the courses that you uh, student is enrolled in. And historically, we would just make a new one, start from scratch, make it clean, make it new. The problem here is this page is super high visibility. You've all ended up on this page before, I'm quite certain. Um, and it's high complexity. There's like a thousand lines of code just to get like student information and course information. Um, and we needed it to basically have feature parity when we made a new one. It, we still need to be able to get to certificates, enroll, unenroll, do email settings, all of that. And this is a problem um, because that was going to take a lot of time to re-implement from scratch um, to meet our requirements. But we found a useful pattern by looking at our old versus our new architectures. Um, and it basically boils down to this, which is we want to, uh, instead of rewriting, mirror as much of the core logic and structure as possible while also allowing for clearly scoped refactors and following best practices. So we want the new version to be better, but we can also rely on the lineage and the code from our older implementation. So to see how we do that, let's look at these two architectures very quickly. So we have our old architecture, Django views. Here we have a user goes to request a page, which is a Django view. That's a Python function, again, that lives inside of our platform. That's going to gather some data, which is our page context. It's also going to select the page template. This is the actual HTML that uh, it's going to render out. It's also got some macros and logic in it. The Python function then mashes these two together and returns a bunch of rendered HTML back to the user. Compare that with micro front end applications, our MFEs. Here the user visits the new experience, which is our MFE, again, a React and Redux application. Um, that's going to request the data it needs from our back end. Um, it's going to return that data to the micro front end, which is then going to be in charge of displaying all that information to the user. And note that we've saved a server rendering step. So now there's a lot less power needed by our servers every time a user goes to view a page. Faster, cleaner, we like this. And hopefully you're thinking, wow, uh, I see some similarities between the two, even though we're moving towards this new micro front end application. Um, and you'd be right. We can use these similarities, um, uh, even though they're sort of called in a different order, um, to instruct how we're going to design our new implementation. So the Django views, I've color coded them to match. Our Django view and our backend API are both the business logic and gathering data. They both need to return some data, our page context or our response data, um, to a presentation, which is either our template or our page or our MFE, and the user is going to interact with that. So this gives us a really clear starting point where we can map large portions of our old logic to a new implementation. So our process that we ended up with had four steps that I think are really powerful for moving again from old to a new implementation. Um, step one is duplicate the backend logic. We can effectively take our old Django view and copy all of the Python function to a new implementation. But it was important for us to clearly split the logical boundaries. So in our old implementation, it did some funky things like the Python script was generating HTML, which is kind of gross. We don't want to have to do that, especially if we're sending that to an MFE. And our page templates, the things that normally take care of just presentation, we're also doing things like calling APIs and gathering extra data. So instead, we wanted to copy most of that data, but any place where these boundaries were blurred, 
we wanted to clearly separate them. So our new API was just gather data, do the business logic, and we wanted our new MFE to, as much as possible, just do the presentation of the gathered data. Um, the next step, though, is with all of our MFEs, we talk about this idea of front-end driven development. We want our front-end to be able to say, this is how I would like the data structured, because that's going to make it easy for me to develop to. And so we did that. We had this sort of in-between, which is I'm calling back-end informed front-end driven development. The MFE still says, this is how I want you to structure the data I'm getting, but that's informed by at least the rough data and shapes that we now have from our new back-end. Uh, the third step then is to translate between the two. So we have a back end that's producing almost the same page context as before. It's gathering the same data minus some presentation details. And then through our serializers, we translate that to match our contracts. And importantly, it's lets us leave our page context pretty much the exact same as it was before. And the final step here was applying some selected refactors. So anywhere where we were calling an old API, we wrapped them in signatures we owned uh, to allow us, while we were profiling code, to refactor and change details that no longer served us. So for example, we found that one single function was 60% of our page load time, and we found we didn't need it anymore. So just for a small piece of the backend logic, we could change how it worked and dramatically speed up our new experience. Now, all this together reveals our entire pattern. So we duplicate the backend logic, clearly delineating our logical boundaries. Again, we can pretty much take the old backend as is and keep a lot of the business logic. Again, for a page like our, our student dashboard, um, this saved us a ton of time. It saved us having to re-implement and find all the strange little tweaks in that because we could just bring that logic forward but let us delineate those logical boundaries so we weren't doing things, again, like building HTML in our Python anymore. We could create a cleaner separation moving forward. Next, we defined our front-end contracts and started building the MFE. And this is, they get to live in this great world where they say, we're gonna shape the data to be what we want it to be, and we can build on our own. And then the backend would translate from the existing page context um, to the contracts defined by our front-end, and finally, we wrapped a lot of our old functions so we could start, we had a clearing interface to start uh, refactoring along the way. Um, and at the end, this left us with our new experience, which is a clean new micro front end, um, which retains a lot of the nuance um, and business logic of the old implementation while still allowing us to refactor. We've now made it much faster. It returns all of a user's courses instead of just a few of them. Um, in nearly the same time, if not better. And importantly, it was a quick development process. So to do this from scratch um, would have been a massive undertaking. And since this is a pattern, we think we're going to have to do much more of moving our experiences from old Django rendered pages to MFEs, um, that this hopefully is gonna be a really, uh, a way to do that pattern um, more easily going forward. I hope all of that was useful. If you find yourself doing a similar process or want to nerd out with me, um, this is how to find me. I am on the Open Edit Slack at N Sprankle. Look for that guy. I don't look the same anymore, but that's the icon you're going to look for. Um, and there is my email as well. So if you have questions, comments, are doing something similar, I also love nerding out about X blocks and a lot of other nerdy code stuff in Edix platform. Um, feel free to message me. And I think I made that just under time. Perfect.